This is the March 2021 Front Yard Garden Tour. And yes, spring has sprung. Isn't that great news? So beginning right here under the pine trees, I've moved a few plants. Nothing major is happening out front though, I'll admit. I moved the hydrangea that used to be in the office bed. And I don't know if I pointed out that I've got a few little baby hookahs along with a red azalea. I have not painted the bench, still mulling over colors. Pretty sure it will get painted at some point though. There's a little bare spot underneath the bench where the hydrangea was and also one of these three ferns. I moved one over here. And then I've moved a little potted azalea over here. These are just temporary items. I'm going to be planting some gladiolas back here, I believe. And um, it's time to trim the boxwoods already. You can see they've got new growth on them. So moving along, I have some new little edgers that I've started adding to this bed. I need to buy more. This was kind of a test run. I do like the way they look. So I'm planning to run those all the way up to the, the walkway down over there. And um, I'm not sure how far I'll have them go toward the street, but they'll at least go, I believe, to the uh, area where the uh, pine trees begin. So um, nothing much going, as I mentioned. I did notice that my lamium's trying to come back, that little bitty bitty thing there. We'll see if it makes it. And I did move some bulbs. I, I don't know, maybe that's not the thing to do. I um, I did it while they were in bloom simply because once they're gone, I won't remember what flower they were or where exactly they are in the ground. So there are a few here, these are daffodils, and there's a few more there. You can kind of see a little yellow flower on that one. I guess you can kind of see one here too. They were in a couple of places. One set was here behind this uh, metal uh, topiary form. And then there were some over in the bed across the walkway. So you can see the azaleas in bloom and you can see that the hydrangeas are looking like they're gonna bounce back. I did not air, um, I did not blow the uh, debris out of this bed. So it's a little needly right now. I also obtained some calla lilies from a um, meetup uh, socially distanced meetup event with my fellow um, gardening class students and we traded plants and I got these calla lilies so I believe I used to have calla lilies in this area many moons ago and I thought they looked nice here so I thought some new ones would be in order I've also added a little maiden hair fern there in the back and other than that everything is pretty much the same as it was last month so this shrub as well is going to need another haircut. Oh, my finger's giving you a little bit of... This one is flowering a bit. I did trim it slightly, but it's going to need some better shearing attention. And then moving along, we have a couple of potted plants. This one with the sweet alyssum, the white flowers that are cascading, had been in the office bed, which we just left simply for want of a place to belong. And then this little pot of pansies keeps moving around wherever I think I need something. So it's nice to have pots. I never realized, I guess I never appreciated the value of pots in that you can move things where you want them. Maybe you need a little pop of color. Maybe you have a little naked spot that just looks funky. So now right in front of those, I have a new shrub. It's a Pittosporum Wheeler's Dwarf and I've mirrored it on the other side with another. And they're supposed to stay pretty small and I guess my pruning can keep them to the size that I'd like. So that's two shrubs out of the little ragtag nursery. That makes me happy. It's going to eventually not exist, I hope. And then if you look at the porch, we've got everything in its place. Unlike last month where I, for some reason, did not remember to put my plants back in their planter. Oh, I did still forget to put something away though. My little metal basket that I collect debris in, it's usually hiding behind these shrubs. So you can see that the candy tuft is um, growing and filling out. I do 
uh, also the lobelia in the front, the two pots to the front, and the pansies. I think I mentioned last month that I have pansies in here that I grew from seed that I had collected from a, a plant that I got from a box store. So everything's doing what it should do in spring, and uh, I do rotate or um, alternate these plants every so often. I'll just, uh, I, I rotate them actually while they're in the spot that they're in, but then uh, every couple of weeks I'll trade pots because one side does get a little more sun than the other. I do the same with those big planters in the back. And um, moving on to the, the myrtle, it's still looking pretty open and airy, although it does not look as translucent. I don't think that's the right word, but it's filling in. It doesn't look quite as see-through as it did last month, so that makes me happy. Now in moving the, um, or in planting this Wheeler's Dwarf, I needed to move the catmint, which had been closer to those uh, boulders, pebbles. No, they're not pebbles, stones. And uh, this poor catmint, I think I've moved it three times. <laughs> I don't know how it will respond, but it seems pretty hardy. And mints, if it is a mint, are pretty hardy, so I'm not too worried. I did take out some um, petunias that had been here. I was gonna just toss them, but then I thought, what the heck? We'll move them down, see if they make it. So the azalea has one bloom. You'll recall in last month's video, I had one bloom in the other azalea. So now they each have one bloom. That's all, just one. And here are my petunias, still blossoming. They're filling out a bit, but they're not long for this world. They still look raggedy in my opinion. And I think I'm going to move some of the annuals, the seedlings that I've got going in my little nursery in my backyard. Um, so actually this azalea doesn't have much of a bloom. There's a teeny bit left there, but it's starting to fade. Now I have added some seedlings that are kind of hard to see behind the azalea here. Yeah, they're really hard to see. I don't know if you can make them out. They're actually uh, poppies. We'll see if they make it. And I noticed that one of the ones that I direct seeded is doing very well. That's the only one I've actually been able to detect. I moved some um, additional poppies further on. So let's move and you can see those. I moved, I had direct, direct seeded some perennial flax here and those are these little tiny ones in the front. But then I had also started seedlings in cell um, pots and those were doing a lot better so I've planted them out here and then you can see the poppies that I've transplanted out here. We'll see how they all do. Um, the calabrachoa or calabrachoa, I'm not sure which is the proper uh, name or pronunciation. It's looking good, I think. Now there's a little change here. I still haven't planted up this bed, but I've been playing around with plants from my little ragtag nursery to see what I want to put here. So I've put a couple of the needle, needle plums over here. I'm not sure, they seem like they might be a little too close. I am gonna rework the um, little path I've created. I do need a path though, because when it comes time to trim things back here, you know, I need a place to step without um, stepping into the actual plants. And I'm not too worried with uh, um, compressing the soil as much as I'm worried uh, with, I'm more worried about not smashing plants with my big feet. So I can't tell you the name of this one. I think it's a hawthorn. I'm pretty sure it's a hawthorn. And then there's some little volunteer uh, vincas that are coming up. We used to have a lot of vinca back here and I guess it receded or I don't know, it's perennial. So here's where I moved some of those uh, petunias that used to be by the azaleas. I don't remember where the other one went. I think we've already passed it. Um, the camellia bloomed and it, well, it's not a red, which makes me happy. It's still very much on the coral side. So it's, it's warmer, a little warmer than I was hoping for. I'm still trying to figure out where that's gonna go. And this boxwood is showing new growth. So that'll need some trimming. I acquired a new plumbago because Clarence, you know how I am. Maybe you don't, but now you do. I have the um, Arborvita moved into the back here. I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going to plant it. And then I have another plumbago that I've got right here. These are both uh, actually probably gonna go in the backyard. So they're sitting here for now, soaking up some sun. I think I'm gonna move the potato bush back to where the um, small plumbago is. 
Um, what else is going on? I've got some buds on my uh, roses. In fact, oh, look at this. <gasps> One of them starting to open. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's kind of pink. They're actually iceberg and they're white, but that one's got a little bit of a pink tone. I uh, see a lot of growth on the bougainvillea. I really love this bougainvillea when it goes into bloom. It's white and I just, I'm a sucker for white. Um, I've moved a few things around. You can see the position is different and my gladiolas are coming up. These are all purple gladiolas and they look really uh, sturdy. So I can't wait to see those going to bloom this summer. I've got more freesias going on back here and my um, salvias are starting to try to throw up some flowers. I don't know, maybe they need a little more spring in their step. And I've got a little bit more, I believe that's perennial flax there. I don't remember seeding it here, so I could be wrong. Maybe it's not flax, we'll see. I've got a few blooms on my um, Live Forever Sedum, which is delightful. I was reading that I need to cut these blooms back after they're finished and I may get another bloom, another set of blooms, which makes me happy. I also have some blooms coming in on this Ianthus. Look at that. I don't know if you can, you can see it. It's right there. So pretty. I hope that thing gets covered in blooms. I have one little Iceland poppy coming up. I love that one because it's white. Ah, more white. The snapdragons are doing great. The new uh, ball topiary also looking very good, needing a trim. Still haven't finished the gravel. It's waiting there for its time in the sun. I have plenty of pink snapdragons. I'm absolutely enamored with these. I love that color. I wouldn't mind if they were a little taller, but actually in this spot, they're kind of the perfect height. No blooms on this sweet pea shrub yet, and the uh, verbena is starting to look a little yellowed. I think I'm gonna trim back some of that foliage that's looking yucky. I'm not sure if that's what I'm supposed to do, but that's what I'm going to do. The lamb's ears are settling in pretty well. These little boxwood babies here are doing well, still not looking like each other. You notice the one on the right has a lot more new growth than the one on the left and has much more of a ball shape. But I love them both. Now in the walkway bed, I'm still waiting to see if these are all uh, Coreopsis seedlings. I believe they are. I do have some bulbs coming up that I don't really remember planting here. I may have but they may be old bulbs that were left from when we redid this whole area because this area had some random bulbs scattered about in colors that I didn't really care for. I hadn't planted them. So when they bloom, we'll know for sure. This one looks, it's hard to see. This one looks like it's gonna be purple. So maybe that one is one that I planted because that would make sense. The ones that were here before were I believe orange or yellow or something like that. I've trimmed the uh, licorice plant a bit and uh, trimmed back the fountain grass. So poor Cleo, her snack is missing. Look at her. Where's my snack? Well, at least I could put my fat butt here in my favorite chair. I wish you could smell the air right now. I have several citrus trees in my backyard and it's breezy and oh, the delicious smell of the blossoms is floating into my front yard. So everything seems to be doing pretty well. The Creeping Jenny is looking a little bit more filled out. The color's a little gold, more golden, as well as with the sedum. Not so much with the Ligustrum. I'm still waiting for that one to get a little more lemon lime. But everything is growing and greening and, you know, getting blossoms on it, getting uh, buds on it. So that makes me very happy. This little Viola or I still haven't decided it may be a pansy, is um, getting more buds on it as well. And my Rudbeckia, oh, this cat's gonna trip me. Oh, you crazy cat. My Rudbeckia is growing even more, so that is making me very happy. So this one ought to look pretty handsome when it grows in, I think. Here comes my 
little slice of sun that we'll only have for a little while before it disappears. Here's a pretty fern that I bought on clearance. I'm gonna get tired of hearing that at Lowe's and it's just doing great. It was very, very sad when I bought it, but it, it seems to like it here on my porch. You can't really appreciate it from anywhere but the porch, which is why I'm up here to show it to you. I have a bench here and it's a lovely place to sit and enjoy coffee and it'll be even nicer once this rose here really starts to bloom. It's just gonna be a pretty little spot to sit and enjoy everything. And wow, thank you, Mr. Sun, for lighting the, the garden makes a nice little vignette to look at. So even though we won't have the sun for very long, it's nice that it shows you, well, most of what's going on down there. So here's a view of the climbing rose. And I need to do a little bit of tying up there at the end because I would like it to extend as far as possible along this this beam of the porch cover. But it's got some um, little buds developing and I think it's gonna be gorgeous this, uh, this spring. The redbud tree is also in bloom. I think you can kind of make out the buds on that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Well, it's named appropriately for those lovely little red buds that develop up and down all the branches. And then simultaneously with that, it starts to develop these leaves. They're kind of a little coin shaped leaf, maybe about the size of a, a half dollar or a dollar coin. And they, they will eventually cover this whole tree and it will provide a little bit of um, shade against the sun. We don't get too much sun coming directly from that side of the house, but it's very beautiful. I really do love redbud trees. I wouldn't mind having quite a few more. Maybe one more in the front and maybe a few in the back. So this is what I call the ragtag nursery. And what it is, if you haven't seen it before, it's a collection of shrubs that I've accumulated most of them were clearance purchases, usually from Lowe's. And I am working on uh, finding homes for everything here and more importantly, trying really hard not to add to the collection. No promises though, because I can't resist a good deal. Oh, let's try to get a view of this. This is new. This tarp of dirt is, um, Part of a better project it doesn't look too cool but it's actually part of something great um, and I'm gonna go show you that in a minute so the driveway triangle that I've complained about before is solved voila thank you to my neighbor thanks to my neighbor he decided he wanted to redo his whole parking strip and he included this little triangle even though technically it's part of our property but if you've seen my previous videos, you may know that we had a, a status plant that was having trouble staying alive here. We had a lot of weeds. I had taken to it and tried to fix it and it created a different problem. So anyway, long story short, it's looking pretty darn good and I didn't have to lift a finger. So I'm very grateful for that. And that is where all that dirt came from because the neighbor said, this is good dirt, which I had just amended. So I knew it was good dirt. He uh, wanted to make sure I had it to use on other projects if I wanted. So thank you, Jim. So here's a look at the lantana. I showed that I had started printing it last month and I have not had an opportunity to work on it again since then, mainly because it's in sunlight the majority of the day. It does um, find shade in the afternoon. Right now it's kind of shady and of course the sun's not as uh, intense, but um, Prior to daylight savings time, I would run out of time at the end of the day. I have a lot going on. So hopefully now with the daylight savings time, I'll be able to do just a little bit more on this side. The problem we have is it hadn't been trimmed in a very long time. Had a lot of pine needles, pine cones, debris, people's trash, because as they walk by, some people are very rude and they throw trash. We'll be keeping this, but we are going to eventually redo 
this parking strip. I believe I've mentioned that before, but I'll mention it again in case I didn't. This is the sad little status plant that I talked about last month <laughs> with no roots. And so it's dead because you can't live if you're a plant and you have no roots, at least as far as I know. We're, we're going to be removing all this turf. Um, it's a sad excuse for grass. You know, I hate this stuff that we've got growing in our front yard. And so what we're going to do is instead make it into a dry creek kind of a bed. We're going to um, put some different assorted rocks and pebbles and uh, drought tolerant California native plants in here, which will be a good solution because even though it's very green right now, there is no irrigation here currently. And so the greenness is due to the rain, but the rest of the year it looks pretty bad. So that's a good solution. Trying to water it with a hose just isn't working because we have to run the hose across the sidewalk. And we do have a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, but all the time we have a lot of walkers in our neighborhood. So we don't want that hazard. So I just want to close by saying thank you so much for tuning in, watching my video. I tried to make it a little more um, to the point this time. It's a little difficult for a chatty person like myself, but I appreciate you tuning in and I hope that you will um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want to see more videos from me, you can certainly subscribe and I would appreciate that as well. I will be doing another tour of our front yard in about a month. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next month.